put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. Married with Children, Season 3, Thoughts. Starting with the intro. Now, yeah, this was the season where, yeah, the, the show got a lot more popular because the Terry Ricolta, I guess I pronounce it, her campaign against, you know, her cups runneth over. And... And this is also the season of I'll See You in Court. Now, the on this season, the episodes are almost all in the right order on the discs. In fact, the only one that wasn't was the Lost episode, which is placed on as the, the very last episode, rather than in its order. And you know, it's, yeah, it's because it's a special case. The, you know, a lot of people hadn't had a chance to see it before. Now, Chris Kovac just recently said, who knows what the president meant? Well, the meaning of his words is pretty clear, but maybe you mean that he says so many things and many of them barely make any sense. And certainly when Trump said it, he clearly didn't mean it. And Jake Ugers recently said that calling Trump a kid is belittling kids. And that's when I realized Trump is not a kid. He's Anthony Fremont. Not any kid, I suppose I should say. And Rush Limbaugh didn't believe in hurricanes until one came close to him. You know, in that case, I think it would be fair to expect him to pay for the evacuation of others, since he's so sure that won't be necessary. Then if there is no hurricane, he can be paid that money back. He thought he could. And, yeah, this is number three on the list of, you know, in, in the ranking. And, yeah, that's, I'd have to agree with that. This is absolutely one of the very best. You know, who hasn't encountered a librarian who seemed to just hurt them on a personal level? You know, just brief, and I'm not saying this this woman was like a monster, but just I've personally encountered one where I had reserved several DVDs, and she would only let me have one of them, and then I could return for the others, where it's just, yeah. And, yeah, the, on, on this, you know, right away I know it's the, the different, of course, and the, the different intro, and they also changed the music, but that might just, I'm, I'm almost certain that's for the, the DVD, and maybe it's only on my set, but, yeah, it's now this, I don't want to say MIDI version, or my, I, I never remember what, how you pronounce that, but it's not quite that, but it is this, really lame like cover with no lyrics and just yeah I ended up just muting the the sound until the episodes began but yeah you know they filmed a new version of him handing them money and you know the you have these brief clips that look like they're from episodes but you know they're not actually taken from 
actual episode, or certainly not from this season. I'm almost certain that not at all. And there are a few things that are slightly confusing about the new intro. When when you first see Al's image, and that's the first one, so you don't know yet if there's going to be movement in these new images. He's just sitting still, and he's got this, like, you know, glare on his face. It looks like it's literally a still image. And then the next one show movement, so... You know, and then Kelly's breaks the fourth wall, and that's the only which which the show really doesn't do very often at all. So yeah. It's good. My hedge clippers. Yes, Dad, remember? Well don't ever do it again. Did Bud get a haircut? Well, it looks like he had them all. Oh. Cut. Everything about him is. Once or twice. Nah, Pig would just serve him cold. He certainly can't read it. <laughs> a movie or a date. That is a pretty good little Al Bundy. They, they must have spent a while casting, because that, yeah. I'll be waiting for you. You owe us $2,183. Oh, here it is. <laughs> Editorializing, are we? And he slams the door on her. No. And they're wearing bags on their heads and change their names. They're not going to wear their bags in the house. And Buck's wearing a bag, too. Don't Bundy that book. That is one of my all-time favorite quotes from the show. And I finally got you. Her facial expressions are such gold. Your shame is my gold watch. And once again, these quotes are out of continuity. So you think I'm a loser? Just because I have a stinking job I hate, a family that doesn't respect me, a whole city that curses the day I was born? Well, that made me loser to you. But let me tell you something. Every morning when I wake up, I know it's not going to get bed any better until I go back to sleep again. So I get up, have my watered down tang and still frozen pop tart, get in my car with no upholstery, no gas, six more payments to fight traffic just for the privilege of putting cheap shoes on the cloven hooves of people like you. I'll never play football like I thought I would. I'll never know the touch of a beautiful woman. I'll never again know the joy of driving without a bag on my head. But I'm not a loser. Because despite it all, me and every other guy who'll never be what he wanted to be are still out there being what we don't want to be 40 hours a week for life. And the fact that I haven't put a gun in my mouth, you pudding of a woman, makes me a winner. You may take just one book. Hey, be fair. Can you eat just one pig? You'd like to check these out, would you? Well, I'm afraid you can't. Do you know why? Because I didn't bring you french fries like the other boys do? You're a bad seed, Bundy. You can't have these books because you are consistently overdue. You never have the money to pay. And looking at you now, I doubt you ever will. I'll bring it back, I promise. You always promise, but you don't follow through. And that, in a nutshell, is your problem. Make a promise, keep a promise. Yeah, yeah, bake a pie, eat a pie. Boy, she hates you, Al. I swear, one day I'm going to take that bowl of sugar and pour the whole thing down her gas tank. My life's got to be better than this. You could have made something of your life, I suppose. But you never followed through. That's always been your problem. Like I always told you, make a promise, keep a promise. And maybe if you did that just once, you'd be a winner. Thank you, Mr. Group. As a matter of fact, I'm going to start keeping promises right now. You won't. Yes, I will. And he takes her sugar bowl and leaves. Well, it just so happens that I returned that book years ago. I'd remember if you did. You weren't here. I'm always here. Not that day. I believe that was the day of the big cake heist. You were rounded up for questioning. You know, Mr. Bundy, I've worked at this library for 44 years. I was eligible for retirement three years ago. Do you know why I stayed? You learn to eat books. 
Well, young Mr. B well, young Mr. Bundy, the Devil Boy. Do you think anyone can teach you anything? Well, you you've just taught me that even the slightest movement can make a fat person sweat. You know, the boys are upstairs working so hard, and this popcorn will make a nice surprise for them. So easy to make, too. <coughs> uh, Peggy, you're supposed to move it around. Oh. Well, gee, now it's not easy anymore. Peggy, did you know this says used before May the 11th, 1972? Marcy, if you read it carefully, it says best if used before May the 11th, 1972. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going to Sweatland. Not a cent more. A tip for him? Sure. Don't touch my wife. And don't say anything. We don't want to have to pay you for that. You're not going to get me with that one twice. There's nothing to buy there. Oh, I already did. Al, I just saw Elvis. Elvis who? Elvis Presley, the king with the pelvis. He just walked by here asking where the mall pharmacy was, and I pointed it out to him. He's been spotted all over the country, and I think I just saw him. Peg, let me explain three things to you. Number one, Elvis is dead. Number two, Elvis was never the good when he was alive. And number three, if Elvis was alive, he'd want you to clean my shirts. I'd rather have five hundred dollars. Well, Peg, do you want what Marcy's having? And that's why women love Elvis, and why conservative men don't. The jealousy. This is remarkable, like a whiteboard or Summer's Eve. Joe Biden bought some. Didn't know what he was doing. It's hard to explain. To be fair, that stain really does look like Elvis. Al sweated Elvis. Quick, Al, lower them. It's death, all right, but nobody we know. To use you, not as I have been. I'll show you, Elvis. <laughs> I'm the dog that's all last you. But it was the way he said it. Elvis or me? Shouldn't have given her that choice. But they threw me out of court. And UFOs. And three hooters, like Total Recall. Maybe this is where they got the idea. <coughs> oh, Al, I'm so depressed. Hold me. Poke high. The poke high dot. This is from the IMDb trivia. The poke high dots are playing the rivals, another football team named the Aryans, and you know Aryan being a common word for in white power terminology. Throughout the game, the last names of some of the Aryan players are visible. And you also hear the Polk High game announcer referring to several of the Aryan players by their last names. And all of the names, either visible or announced, are the names of senior officials or high-ranking military officers in the Nazi regime. And Buck doesn't want Peg's burgers either. All right, Al, it's time to do your chores. Wait a second, Peg. We just had sex three nights ago. I'm still kind of woozy. I'm asking you to take out the garbage. Al, the longer of the two jobs, and the more rewarding. <laughs> Don't you even know how to do that? Thanks, Pig. Now it's exactly like sex. <clears throat> Why would I care about that? I play for keeps. And we have a first mention of Bud's sex doll. Well, what? Oh, the soup girl. Soap. S-O-P-E. Uh, hi, Dad. 
It's a young man's world. Better or worse than Al beating the crap out of Matt? I'm everybody's type. Ah, universal boner. Yeah, inspirer. Damn the luck. Look at Steve with the dapper grin while clapping with the cat. So I decided to take up the water boy. <laughs> Industrious. Poor Al. He's having such a miserable day. Gee, I hope he doesn't realize this jacket cost two hundred dollars. My regular is going to hell. No one will remember me. And my wife is wearing a two hundred dollar jacket. <laughs> and we hear the thoughts of all four. <laughs> and Kel tackling that I'll be damned. And the other team carries her. <laughs> and unfortunately, you know, Mrs. Mount is the typical homophobic gay joke. It might seem funny to have a character that's clearly using her job to get close to young women, but countless gays and suspected gays have been beaten and worse because people suspected them of doing this very thing. The Camping Show. And it's ranked 34, and yeah, I'd have to agree, this is one of the best. Um, unfortunately, I will not be repeating jokes. <clears throat> that are really offensive to women who, let's face it, can't help that they have their periods. So, this one will be short. You still let the food get cold. Go ahead and go. And deliverance. Don't apologize to me. There will be nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Take the dog, too. Love, Al. Al. Come on, Peg. <laughs> Not so loud, you'll wake up Al. Legitimately, the, the, you know, Al didn't think he even needed to tell the, you know, Al was certain it was just going to be the two guys who were going to go camping. And Peg, when she hears Marcy, she hasn't heard Al. She assumes, oh, it's just going to be us women. Well, okay, sure, no problem. Just don't, don't yell. You're going to wake up Al. How rustic. Rurally, even agrarian. The farm. Yeah, I know I dropped that every chance I get. I, I love schlub and clump and their delusions of eloquence. Nobody leaves here alive. <laughs> and sing this land is your land. Bad, bad bear. <laughs> well, then our women they shall have. <laughs> More hot water for breakfast, anyone? He's got quills. They're multiplying. The shoe store opens at ten. <laughs> so is the moose. <laughs> Go, sports announcer Peg. That's a good way to get out of this budgetary issue of having to show that. A dump of my own. Yeah, that was pretty short. And this one is ranked 92. And this really, this is one of the ones everybody knows and really remembers. I have an egg and some M&Ms. I can make an omelet. Clearly you've never made an omelet. He beat me by one second. It would grow back. <laughs> you know, that's a... So he's complaining they had too much food. Really, they should have just kept, you know, just throwing the... Yeah, put it, put it back in the refrigerator, or maybe freeze it, and then cook it again and again, and they keep having food, you know. Or they could leave it out and then have a brain fart and go to college. 
Can I have a hundred dollars for a python? <laughs> Marry your own wallet. What does he think? The blonde hair just grows out of your head? That's a man's flush. But it wouldn't be nothing, nothing, without a woman or a girl. This time I don't think he's coming back. So you figure, then we'll bring in a child. Yeah, I don't know what that accent, where that was supposed to come from either. Like last week. He killed our goldfish. This is a man's bathroom. Good thought, Steve. I had another good thought the other day. Where? You don't have a man's bathroom. If I win, I'll pay you back. It was you, Peggy. It'd be just one more thing to dust. What does that toilet have that I don't? A job. And we game fix the sink. And they think this thing with Flintstones theme. But if you live, I have nothing. Yours is just pathetic. Yeah, I want the lottery. And another shot at three somethings. And the first of countless instances of Al walking to the bathroom with the paper under his arm, followed by a flushing sound. I forgot it was this early and that it was just tied already to the, you know, yeah, here at the start, it's actually tied specifically to the man's bathroom. I, I forget if he does it while walking to one of the, because they also have a bathroom, is it upstairs? Maybe I forget. He also did it in the episode where they were eating, e eaten out, or what it was called. So it's not only his own man's bathroom. Really, a restaurant's bathroom is not that, like, not, not a fancy restaurant's place. It's, it's not, like, super masculine in, you know. So that it's not purely man's bathrooms that he does that. Her cups runneth over. And this is ranked 55, and it really, it is, yeah, it's, it's up there. It's, it's, it's a very, very funny episode. And, yeah, to, to briefly talk about Terry Ricolta, I realized that standards were different back then, but seriously, this episode got her that upset. I'd understand better for the camping show, and of course it's not out of sympathy for LGBTQ, which I could see. No, it's because they're there, even if they are mocked. And because it admits that men like ogling women. Again, not because men shouldn't objectify, but because it's too honest. Again, I could completely understand if you were saying that the episode glorifies men ogling women and that that's you know that sends the wrong signal but that's not no no it's just you know oh you know we can't we can't even bring that up or actually I suppose you could argue but nevertheless one of the things mentioned as part of the campaign was the LGBTQ stuff and yeah in that it's not that they, yeah, it's not out of sympathy for them. That doesn't stop me from spending it. No matter what you heard, I'm a good girl and I never would have done that. No matter what you heard, she's a good girl and she never would have done Wait, what was the question? I just heard about your bra. I'm so sorry. Thinking of Al isn't going to help anyone out. I told you we didn't have to do this. The bald and the beautiful. And this is ranked 140. 
There were no quotes on IMDb for it, and it's the first that that was true of. I not a single quote from the convention of the yeah. Oh Al, please, please stop manspreading for the sake of the audience, for the sake of the audience's eyes. It isn't Tuesday, Peg. I didn't wake you, did I? You haven't yet. I couldn't be around people, so I came here. It happens. Good luck with the rest of your life. I'm lucky my hands haven't fallen off. And the women are only treating Al nicely because he's balding. Oh, minoxidil. That's what the Simpsons turn into, Demoxinel. And Buck is licking the stuff off his head. And he wore a sombrero and a condom joke. Still be wearing the Walkman. Ah, like Ginger in the Terminator. So what? He's got a mother. She broke him. Let her let her fix him. Bottoms up. You're not supposed to drink it. It goes on your head. Then why'd you say bottoms up? <laughs> We're getting wackier. Can you still see me? Then you're one of the five percent. And yeah, when you've got someone desperate, you can sell them any old crap. What did you have me for? A biological experiment? Well, there you go. That's why he's scoffing at authority to find often. And just like in the Simpsons app, the son tries some of the stuff. He stood upright. You're not losing your hair. Oops. <laughs> Mom, you don't mind me playing with Bud, do you? No, that's why we had him. And with that, a mighty roar of, I knew it, in a chorus was heard from every house housing a child. Bald American dudes. As far as abbreviations go, that's bad. A hairy child. <laughs> As opposed to one of those bald children from the playground when of, of Springfield when Burns is burying, yeah, nuclear waste. And they've rationalized that they're better for being bald. It's like MGTOWs and such. My couch. Since the day you got down on your knees to propose. Now that's a strong ending. Here we go. Just an immediate end on that last strong joke. Then why did you clip this anti-boldness cure? No, I clipped this other thing. Because to men, boldness is the worst thing possible. When a lot of women really don't care anywhere near as much as we think they do about whether or not their partner is bold. It never even occurred to her that he'd think it was about the anti-boldness cure, nor did it occur to him that it might not be about that. You know, it, for, for both of them, you know, they could have spent a few seconds, you know, flipping over the, the clipping and see, you know, what's on there. And, you know, if she had thought, oh, he might think the boldness thing and just like cross that out or something or underline the tuna sale and yeah he doesn't yeah it's you know Al like reads aloud the, the tuna I had forgotten that we found out so early in the episode that there was actually tuna but yeah they just and they breeze right past it because you know Al is like is are you seriously worried about this and then you know, so so we hear it, and Steve is like, no, 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 look, of course I don't care about that. No, it's this other thing. Yeah. The Romani cried. Yep, I know that's not the word they use, and I am not saying the word that they did use. And this is ranked 102, and yeah, it's it's one of the really good ones. It would have been nicer if we'd been invited. <laughs> yeah, this is the one I was talking about earlier, where they talk about a wet t-shirt contest. And yeah. 
You'd have won. Oh, Al. I speak plate of fancy food. That's nothing to sneeze at. Oh, wait. There we go. And then Marcy sneezes at it too. She's, you know, she's getting to the point where she's willing to use these really trashy, nasty, you know, tactics against the Bundys because, you know, they can't, I mean, they can they can only do so much to prevent the Bundys from ruining things for them. So, yeah, you just, you fight fire with fire. Or sneezes with sneezes. Watch bunk ma ma Mrs. Vandegilder's fur. I think they keyed their cars, too. Why can Buck have a coat upstairs and I can't have boys in my room? Because that coat can't get pregnant. Clearly neither can Kelly. Did you sense we were here? I sensed you were leaving the party without paying me. I swear this is a complete coincidence, but I actually just started replaying Assassin's Creed Revelations. I know, shocker, right after I, so soon after I finished Brotherhood. And that also has Romani as, yeah. Did you leave your toy running on the couch again? It's a refuge for small minds. I'll go, I'll go. <laughs> do me, do me, do me. No death? No, I smell your feet. I've already met my tall, dark stranger. What made you marry Steve instead? Everyone else's is good. But those words could mean anything. <laughs> Look, I'm still alive. And she takes the money right out of Al's wallet. Guess who just kicked the bucket? Ding dong, the jerk is dead. The parking spot guy's name was Simpson? Is that an intentional dig at the show? You're up. <laughs> Come on, Al, this isn't Final Destination. Oh no, I'm not taking her to my house. On a plane, you're flying. So that's how you're gonna die. It's not really good for my career. Okay, it is Final Destination. Won't it burn in the wreck, sweetie? He still bothers calling her sweetie after saying that. I don't mean that kind of insurance, Vulture. I'm taking you with me. All of you. Uh, excuse me here, Steve. Bundys don't fly coach. Given your paycheck, I think that means you don't fly at all. Given your paycheck, you don't fly at all. How am I doing what? Oh, he's fantastic. His hands are gentle, but oh so rough. I mean, can he fly the plane? How would I know? <laughs> and Elle takes off his shoes and the oxygen masks come down. Arms around each other and drinking, being obnoxious. Very Blues Brothers. Alan Pegg. I love the captain on the intercom. You could smoke on planes back then? <laughs> yeah, probably. I, I, or maybe, maybe not quite that late, but there probably were. A time when you could smoke on a plane. I, I hope it's you too. <laughs> and he wants a pillow. <laughs> and she socks him. I'm ready to die. When someone says that in a dark comedy, it always doesn't happen. And Fluffy takes money out of his pocket. <laughs> I love Alan Pegg singing along the songs in this. And another great closing going directly to end credits after the final punchline. Requiem for a dead barber. And I just rewatched Requiem for a Dream since Mother is coming out. So, yeah, fitting. He's dead, Peg. He's dead. All 12 of your remaining hairs. Yeah, I remember. Frosty the Dandruff Man.
I should I should probably stop looking down. People are going to start taking bets on when I'm going bald. It broke my heart when Bud wouldn't go. I had to tell Tony Bud died. He cried when you died. <laughs> if you don't care anymore, marry it. Those are f Kel's funeral clothes. Forget it. I want a hearse. Why am I thinking they buried the wrong guy? Cheer up. Your time will come. And when it does, you'll be glad we have a hearse. Then I guess this isn't your watch. <laughs> Next to me while I'm sleeping. Man, Bud really hates Tony. I mean... Tony wasn't the one who gave him a freaking mullet. But, you know, it was the 80s. What would I do? He's worth more dead than he is alive. This doesn't affect you, honey. You'll be dead. I love you. That's nice, honey. The shoe's on the other foot now, huh, Steve? Last week it was you gleeful about her dying you getting insurance money. And really, that is the effect it has on a lot of people. I called all my friends. What did he say? And a real man. A man who likes girls, but hates women. <laughs> Al, get a haircut, you hippie. Take everything away in the name of progress. The show's message summed up in one line. Al talking about cartoons today must be referring to that the Marge Simpson approved itch and scratchy cartoons. Al Bundy is going to get washed and blown. Good use of the fish islands. So, what do you think of those bears? Well, if they if people didn't feed them, they would they wouldn't keep raiding the campsites. Wow, two different Americas. My old barber used to charge a buck twenty five. What do you charge? Sixty dollars. No, really. <laughs> you know our motto: people are suckers. I'm not supposed to say that to customers. Yeah, they really charge whatever they want. Of course we can. Why else would they be sitting there? And we get more scenes of Al's buddies. I forgot there were so few of them this early on. You know, later we get far more. And I really, I, I love Al with, with the buddies. It's just, yeah, so many jokes about these middle-aged guys' ineptitude at, yeah. Without him, we'd have to get jobs. And Buck seems to like him. Excuse me. Me, I was just some one-night stand with a cool guy, right? I heard that. I'm not daddy's either. R2, am not. Kids, kids. You're both daddy's kids. And they bow their heads and cry. Even though his hand shakes a little and we see his, yeah, he, he, he accidentally cut into his actual head. Not as strong of ending joke as the last two episodes, but at least it's still smash cut on the last punchline. Still consistently great so far. I'll see you in court. And this is rank number 67. And, you know, in, in such a case, we always have to, like... Thing about it. is it like you know just people were really excited to get to see you know this episode or something? no it actually is a really amazing episode and yeah apparently yeah the episode didn't it, it aired worldwide but not in the US back when it originally came out I've watched it many times long before it eventually aired in the US authority on sex and weather it's in my underwear, I dare you. He deserves to go to jail. A change of venue. I want to have a meal on the table. Learn to live without. I did. Goodbye. 
done it in other places? Well, in the first season, no. Now, yes, lots. More beef. <laughs> Steve's joking. What's behind zipper number one? Do you want to be conscious or not? Therefore, I shall open the bidding. Don't you think I've tried? Kids, aren't you forgetting something? Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Rhodes. A million dollars, Al. Do you know what that means to you? Five thousand dollars. Wait, hold up. One second. Are you saying Al is going to see any money off this? Where's everybody going? We're standing for the judge, Mr. Darrow. And the opening statement takes out the stenographer. Steam, you've got the tapes? That's a lot of lovemaking. And the stenographer passes him her number. 30 or 40 times. Sure, when she picks on you, where were you during the underwear examination? And Al does a sports commentary over the sex tape. No sex, no money. That was sex, Al. And again, and we see that they were in fact filmed, and yeah. Another strong ending punchline, direct cut. Eaten out. And this is rank number four. And yeah, it really is that good. Do you think we should have told the kids? Give me that. And he slams the door. When you packed us a lunch. Pretended to be his mother. Uncle Henry buys the day old bread. And the band is called Tears on the Bottom. <laughs> I'm almost certain that's not an actual band name. But it really, it could be. It so could be. Would you prefer Uncle Henry had not died? No. Now what? And she kicks him in the shin. <laughs> yeah, she's getting there. She's realizing that you can't just, you can't be nice to the Bundys. It's not going to work out for you. You could spend on your own. Yeah. Bail money for the children? I love Henry's last words. <laughs> to just go out instead. Well, you can see that when your mom cooks. Now we really are in the Blues Brothers restaurant scene. Jack and a beer bag. It's slang that the kids use. It means Coke. Potatoes for everybody. <laughs> when it's free. He's such a giver. You wouldn't mind? Dance with me, you moron. <laughs> and I love them having fun with the waiter. And he's clearly about ready to go postal. This is not the first time kids have screwed with him. Dig in, but watch your fingers. I knew it. I knew it. Yep, full on the Blues Brothers restaurant scene. I feel like the Queen of England. <laughs> no, no, I don't care about that. Just don't change my radio stations. Water, nature's fruit juice. <laughs> hey, when I'm not in school, I don't want to think about it, okay? The kids left us here to die. <laughs> Pardon me if I doubt you. Then pardon me if I kill you. And they dance right back up to the table. <laughs> I love their faces as they're dancing and just, you know, the crossing both ways and the turning. Yeah. It's been really good. Yeah, whatever. Uh, hey, pay us. Now would be a good time to panic. Dishes. Me? Peg don't do no stinking dishes. Give me your shoes. She's got a shoe. And if any of you pricks move, I'll access you every mother last one of you. And another great ending.
My mom the mom. This is only ranked 176. I'd definitely rank it higher than that by at least 25. I love Puppet Peg. <laughs> and she wakes up. And I love Al explaining it's harder to steal small change from the mall now. So money, be, money will be a little tight for a while. But you gotta take care of your jacket. Nobody knows the trouble he's seen. The Bundy Glee Club. I see where Kel got her math skills. Yeah, sure. You got change for a million? <laughs> and Al basically says, Bake for me, I will have sex with you. But it's not for us, right? No, honey, I wouldn't do that. Man, the Bund Bundies are remarkable at picking up their s the sleeping fellow Bundies. What's a degree? <laughs> yeah, close enough. 50 bucks for a new window. And I could, use I could use 60 for a new jacket. I mean, since we're on the subject of money. Winter? I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw him. And he set a record in high school football. You might have heard. Get married, have kids. <laughs> Steve, what's a tibless? Yes, Bud did it. I apologize. They promised to let me pay for it. <laughs> that one just fell on the floor. This hair, do you want it sticking out of the cookies or is a surprise in the middle? Just do what they do in the bakeries. In the middle then. Yeah, that's... <laughs> that's probably unfortunately true. I want a horsey, damn it. <laughs> Wait, Marcy did bake 600, 800 cookies overnight? Most of my friends aren't even up yet. A nickel? A lemonade stand. You know, Peg's giving awful advice, but she clearly does have skills in the mom sense of the word. Mom, when I grow up, I want to be just like you. I want to do nothing. I want to be nothing. <laughs> Save me from this man. <laughs> Buy lemonade at the mall. Should we get Bud a new jacket? Why? He's inside now. Today, you are a man. <laughs> Another great ending. Can't dance, don't ask me. This is ranked second. And, yeah, I, I more or less agree. It's definitely very high up there. Top five, definitely. Oh good, I caught you on a break. If it was that easy, I would have gone years ago. The evil socks. And their wives claim they, know nothing, they don't know anything about it too. Of course. Mom, big news. Bud's like, oh, that's crazy right now. Why did she write nerds? Second time this season they used nerd about someone who's, say, a moron, but not a nerd. She misspelled ha ha. I couldn't find your belt, but if we tie her down with this, girl repellent. Was funny, though. Of course, Steve's mother's an idiot. Al's mother just threw up in the dip. I hope she was polite enough to try to pick it. Up back out a lot of Vandervik in District 9. Subtle, Kelly. I took tap when I was your age. What a surprise. Then you won't be surprised what Daddy has to say to you. <laughs> of course the principal still hates Al and Peg. Oh, but these people won't matter once you graduate high school. Yeah, right. You do now. <laughs> Job it down, cook it up. 
there'll be other janitors, with any luck. And Al's still obsessing over the socks. We don't really have to go to a recital, do we? <laughs> you can have fun in those shoes, but all you seem to want to do in them is tap. Well, Steve, you took the shunning well. And there really is a signal. <laughs> oh no, it's Bruno. If he sees me, I'll die. Hi, Bruno, look, it's Kelly. <laughs> you know, it's a parole violation. Oh, he's a real winner, this one. I think it did make her feel better, bud. And that really is a stunning dance. And that's definitely Applegate and the janitor actor. Steve, shut up. Where did everybody go? <laughs> Good ending joke, not great. A little too little build up for the. You know, they, they didn't get into the Trelawney, I want to say it's the name Sisters that much. I, I think there should have been something about how the women changed their minds about, you know, after they gave the signal because of a nookie or something. I, I happened to look up. Holy crap, Bruno is Francisco's, Francisco Sindino. And George the Skinner King. I will never get the image of Francisco Sandino and George the Skinner King dancing out of my head. But, you know, he was also on fame, so. Three job, no income family. And this is ranked 121. For a little bit there, they talk like cavemen. There wouldn't be any meat on it, would there? You're just going to have to get a second job. Before you call in your order. Earn lots of S's. Well, I can do that. Save your breath. All the guy has is his dog and the sound effect the tech guys can add. Don't bite it, don't bite it, don't bite it. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, no, Steve bit it. And that's an early Pauly Shore role correcting Al's work on burgers. Usually he's awful, not funny at all, but here I found Pauly Shore... My mouth rebelled against me saying that. He does do things people find annoying. Or a shoe salesman? I never should have fired my dad. Losing a tooth when I was a kid. Well, how'd you like to make a fortune today, Steve? <laughs> now Marcy can only cook fish sticks. She was making him extensive meals earlier to make up for... I, th I think it was impotent or something. Well, at least you're not in real estate. I know what I have to do, and it's her. So good. A great reversal and ending joke. You expected it to just be him back, but she's a Bundy too. And of course she would suck at that job as well. And of course everyone working at the burger place is a teenager. The one adult there there used to be was fired by his own son. The harder they fall. And this is ranked 149, which I think is about accurate. To when we couldn't get the mouse. We're out of cough syrup. Ah, VHSs. Yeah, an annulment. Oh, heavenly dog, I won Schwarzenegger. So did I. Oh, that's my date. <laughs> And Patty just keeps egging the guy on. I'm not that kind of girl. They don't have a virgin to sacrifice. <laughs> That's your rule, Steve. He hung up on us. How rude. The maniac call in place of the doctor? Drake couldn't make it today? I'll wear them for a necklace. Oh, I know a guy who has one just like on that would no, Just one just like that. Only with noses. My mouth continues to rebel. 
Al telling Steve how to fight really reminds me of Homer teaching Bart to fight Nelson. The fight's about to start. Uh, don't use him as a visual sight gag because of his size. Bud stole his wallet. And you've got a nice one. And they even take the VCR. But not Buck, and he even gives a... Wait, really? Look at, at the end. Another great ending. The house that Peg lost. And it's ranked 69. I'd say that, that about that placement, possibly even top 50. Oh, there it is. Like your hamburgers. I love you. No, I already took some. Thanks. Your last summer party. Dad, I was eight. But the judge wanted to try you as an adult. <laughs> you know, I'm getting hungry. Because you'd find your way home. I'm not sure they can do it. I love why they're not using a chimp. Ha! Spell it. We already know she can't. Of course he will. Oh, gone! <laughs> if they don't bring it up, now why on earth would they bring it up? This is like when you were worried that they were, you know, seeing them, seeing Steve go into the garage. Oh, wait, that was Marcy, but yeah. Who is it? <laughs> well, ours is a moat. And you were there. And you? Yeah, right. Who are the old people? <laughs> I've had too much for too long. I love Bud Hefner. Can you say, I'm drinking milk? And the worst of the insults hurled at Kel is Bundy. We're going to sleep in the hole, bud. <laughs> Remember, no boys. The fighting, that's no problem. And another great ending. Married with prom queen. This is only ranked 220. I definitely rank it higher than that. They seriously consider cooking and eating their sibling. <laughs> and Peg just joins in the chat for a fraction of a second. You kind of thought maybe she'd get out something for them, even something barely edible, uncooked or something. Nope, she just joins in the chat. To hell with nutrition, let's talk about food. <laughs> Hey, how come you always get the plastic thread? And Buck runs off. And they actually did try eating Bud once. Buck once. And all you can think about... <laughs> Oprah have a formal episode? Don't you remember anything? That's in saying I do. How you doing? You know, even that is too much. How is he supposed to answer that? Freddy, aka Dr. Fishy. I'm glad they're gone. <laughs> oh, honey, I never wanted your life. I just took it because it was there. It didn't work on our wedding, and it's not going to work now. $500 isn't enough. Rotten hell. Exactly. This is how people feel about those they went to school with, even decades down the line. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Al. You know, Barney Rubble wasn't much. Check out the rockin' band. Not the who, but the why. Children? None. And that's the answer she wanted. I was wrong. What a shame. 
And I love the ironing shadow on the back of Al's suit. Jack. Al. <laughs> and Connie brings in the foreign exchange students. Oh, the racism. One vote short. Good cliffhanger and ending. Married with Prom Queen, the sequel. And this is ranked 161, which I would say is more appropriate. The kids are still starving. <laughs> I really love that. Me too. Garbage salesman. <laughs> Boot soup. Of course, Bud means the roads. Ancient history. The 60s. <laughs> and she does the Nixon finger thing. Yeah, the, the, you know, these, these morons would have supported Nixon. He's a rebel. More and more and more, she cried. How'd you hurt your forehead? Shaving. Ah, Bud's renamed Moonchild. I love the Bundy kids' the 60s phrases. Are you allowed to vote? No? Then let me abuse you. How very Republican of you. When you woke me up. And she cheats on the election, of course. And Jack collapses. What's that in your pocket? My rib. <laughs> Another great ending joke, she's just completely ignoring him being in pain. Not ignoring, but not not only just it. She, she doesn't merely... Yeah, she actually says, stop whining, this is my moment. Yeah. The Dateless Amigo. And this is ranked 116, which is about right. Hi, honey. <laughs> who made the rule that the person who makes the least should introduce the person who makes the most? Again, the show summed up in one line. I love the amigo salute. You know, that actually, that would explain some of the career choices of... Yeah, that's actually... Giovanni Ribisi again, and Stephen Dorff, so, yeah. And why Faustino himself you know, didn't really have a career after the show. I'm not going to be a garbage man, but you got her hopes up and everything. Their hopes. Chicklet. Well, I'm sure at some point... We're not going on until, and I love the, the, I, I want to say this is the episode where they're, you know, they brought, yeah, yeah, that's the, the chiclet thing. Okay, so we heard you have good news, is, and you got, you know, the champagne, okay, well, we have some wine, is, no, well, I have a chiclet in my pocket, is Al going to jail, and out comes the, yeah. A flashlight? To be fair to Al, you might need both hands for carrying the trash out. It's just that the shoe lights he made are impractical. If they were tiny, it'd be a lot better. I've seen people with lights on their shoes since this episode aired. I'm not sure it's for use. It might just be that they thought it looked cool. It's Bud to you, Dad. What about tax? I really love the, the that whole idea, and and he's whining about, oh, I have to, you know, you get hassled for change by people as you make your way to your Mercedes, and Buck runs off. It's just little fire. I saw it in a store window, and the mannequin head comes off, and then the whole body comes apart even more. Great slapstick. And you can kind of tell, you know, for, for both Stephen Dorff and Giovanni Ribisi that, you know, 
yeah, you, you can recognize that that's a younger version of the, yeah. And Giovanni Ribisi is even playing the same character. Another great ending joke. And yeah, you know, once women have seen a guy with, a, you know, with a woman at least once, they feel like he's safer, you know, before they couldn't be sure. But another woman led him close, so there must be a reason for that. He made her happy, maybe he could make me happy. You know, until that, <clears throat> I forget who made that joke, but there's that thing of, there's there's like a comic I found via, you know, the, the college humors feed on Google Plus, where like, you know, what women, you know, women, uh, a woman's perspective on a date and then a man's perspective and the man is sitting there like oh I hope she doesn't think I'm weird and the woman is like please give me any indication that you are not a serial killer and yeah you know women do have to worry about that that's yeah the computer show I mean I'm not saying very many men literally are serial killers that's just, you know it's an exaggeration but a lot of men are bad for women the computer show is ranked number 224. How? Who is rating it so low? This is one of my personal favorites. You know, before this, before Buck talked on the regular, the computer in this episode talks and just says exactly what Al is thinking and the whole yeah, just it's it's perfect. The the little tech thing they do to the voice so it sounds kind of like a computer robot kind of thing. The voice itself, the lines. Love it. You know, today the episode doesn't ring quite as true since tech stuff that's outdated can be useful for some things. You know, and once something is common in tech, it starts to become much less expensive, more people afford it and get it and such. But the episode does still have some relevance since tech evolves so quickly today. Back then, it was spot on. Computers were ridiculously expensive, they were slow, couldn't do much, and they were so quickly made obsolete. You know, the, the next one is already out. You know, just look at Weird Al's. It's all about the Pentiums and how fast it itself, ironically, became outdated. You know, today it sounds ridiculous how low the numbers are, both in that song and this episode. That's a really great dog movie parody. I was talking about you, Peg. Actually, when it comes to your slippers, the question is how. And Buck just runs off. Excuse me. Why were they even in the building? We're not just like you. I'm the boss here, damn it. Do you feel in charge? I love the image of Al on his knees, one of his shoes in his mouth, and then they all see it, and yeah. I'm not leaving without a discount, so I got you a $200 rebate on this $2,100 model. Yeah, that's... That's the the idea of let's make sure we save money, you know, in that's the the ugly side of that. And I'm not saying everybody who's I personally try to save money, but yeah, if you if you do it the stupid way you end up with that kind of yeah. With the two hundred dollars we saved you exactly. Like when we had the kids, and like when the average American buys anything at the store. Don't just sit there silently. <laughs> Someone knows who's the master of this house, and it brings them to the the computer instead. Yeah. Call who, Ishmael? What happens? Oh, cool. She learned nothing from the other episode. I I should say in the. The in in one of the Easter eggs on the DVD, you know, Christina Applegate talks about that it's not really that it's not that Kelly doesn't care if she has the right answer. It's that she she thinks she does, and she really she fully believes it. That's why she's so eagerly, you know, we were told she stands up in front of the whole class and sings these songs that are clearly from something else. And just, yeah, she legitimately, she keeps trusting Bud. She thinks 
she's given she's given the right answer she thinks she's giving the right answers yeah he's a wonder dog I'm going to use it right now thirty dollars I didn't say for my life I said for the computer Ooh, power surge that's a buck felt good though face it buddy I'm the pet rock of the 80s and yeah back then a regular family did not need a computer because he's married to an idiot <laughs> turn your humor setting down by five percent I will always love Al breaking the computer great ending joke again I'm almost certain I've seen broadcasts of this episode where it does a still frame of Al breaking the computer and then promptly runs credits over that I love that too it's possible I'm thinking of a different episode where he breaks something and it just cuts on. But just, yeah, you know, oh, come on, what kind of idiot would break a $2,500 computer and he smashes it and just immediately cut. And, and like, I think I saw in the IMDb goof section, you know, oh, but they said it cost $2,100. Yeah, but that was before the printer and the modem. Life's a beach. And this is ranked 40, and yeah, it's definitely one of the best. Good signs, kids. When you turn to watch Bend Over, how very payback opening. And Peg's already going through the coat pockets. Did she have enough light in there? The door closed. It's, it works as a sight gag, but then you think about it for a second. I don't know, maybe she's just that experienced at finding money in coat pockets. But we need money. Whatever you can grab is yours. Neat trick. You washed your hands this time? No. Stop touching Kelly's hair then. It was yesterday, Dad. That's what you get for caring, Al. Judgment. I just watched an episode of a kind-hearted sitcom, and I thought we could do our own offensive version. You don't say, Mr. Producer. I mean, Al. Not complaining. We were gonna get the kids vaccinated. <laughs> Shake hands with Mr. Summer. Ugh. <laughs> a G-spot. Kelly, that's a 10-spot. You're going to give her $10 if she finds the G-spot? What? And they immediately break the sandcastle. 913, personal note. Peg tells Al not to look at other women. So one time, when they go to the beach, he does. You're blonde, and she so she's touching his hair and realizes it's a different color than she, what she was just thinking about? I think Marcy might be a few nightmares deep into open your eyes. I, the little girl who keeps calling Bud boyfriend, and the jokes involving her are hilarious. She just keeps, you know, cute girls are, you know, finally kind of receptive to Bud's charms, and she throws water at them, you know. And I think I once heard, I, I watched this with someone else, and they were like, she just emptied the bucket of water. How did she? Yeah, but she had two buckets. You clearly see that. You know, one of the buckets has the, the thing broken, and Bud fixes that one. But she had two buckets. And evidently, there was water in them before Bud walked up. I mean, literally, you know, as, as far as I can tell, they didn't really cut. Like, you know, they cut to different angles. But I don't think they you know, stopped everything and then gave her another bucket of water. As far as I can tell, they it was in, you know, more or less one go. But Bon Jovi. <laughs> oh, you kill me. Well, your actor's desire to return to the theater will, and soon. And swim with a buddy. Dark. <laughs> How long was I asleep? Eh, wait a few seconds, Peg, you'll happen. A little girl cut Al's head right out of the photo. Saves Peg the trouble. Here's looking at you, kid.
and it's ranked 93. Yeah, it's that good. Thank you. Peck's not taking no for an answer this time. Damn, it's Mom's birthday. I better start going. You've been holding it in the entire school year? Kelly, you have to learn to read. <laughs> I might have more luck teaching Buck to sing and dance, but in the Chewbacca suit, I'd pay good money to see it. After you, sweetheart, and he locks it after her. And Kel is still falling for it since, yeah, for the reason I said before. You know, Christina Applegate does a pretty decent job singing in this episode. See, Peg, now everybody knows. All we have time for. <laughs> That's right, keep obviously fake hitting Steve. And of course it makes her self-conscious. It's like the the South Park episode where Mr. Garrison talks about, you know, you saw Dad coming home drunk out of his mind and going straight to bed. And she set up milk and cookies. <laughs> I quite enjoy the usage of peep, you know, peeped, peepees, peepless. You're gonna spill some. What was that? Are you our dog? Some days of the week, yes. Oh well, Al. I knew Marcy would end up torturing Al, I just didn't think it'd be a case of mistaken identity. And his hands don't fit down his pants. It's or his hand doesn't fit down his pants. Yeah. Great ending joke, great season closer, and you know, the, the IMDB Trivia points out that the episode's title is a quote from Casablanca, ruining a classic for millions of people. I love it. And that is it for this one. Hope it was good for you too. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.